writing of the lamp. His Holiness the Dalai Lama, Professor K. Kasuri Rangan, Chancellor of this university, Rectors uh, Professor Sudha Pai and Professor Prasenjit Singh, Deans, Chairpersons, Distinguished Guests, Faculty of this university, Students, Members of the Staff, Ladies and Gentlemen. It's a matter of great happiness that His Holiness is in the midst of all of us today. We are honored by the gracious presence of His Holiness and for accepting to deliver the 11th Jawaharlal Nehru Memorial Lecture on an issue which was equally dear to Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru and is very relevant today, and that is a human approach to world peace. We are also thankful to our Chancellor, Professor Kasturi Rangan, for sparing time to come all the way from Bangalore to join us in welcoming His Holiness to JNU on this occasion. This is also the 125th anniversary of Jawaharlal Nehru. To remember and to pay respect to the late Prime Minister for his contributions in shaping the destiny of modern India, the event is being celebrated in many ways all over the country. This is a happy coincidence that His Holiness could spare some time to visit JNU and enhance the value of this event, which we hold every year. The 10th Memorial Lecture was delivered last year by our President, Honorable Shri Pranam Mukherjee, and before that, the 9th Memorial Lecture was delivered by the former President, Honorable APJ Abdul Kalam. Jawaharlal Nehru University has been established in the name of our first Prime Minister, who himself was a world leader and played a significant role in international affairs. I would like to mention here that the objects of the university are to disseminate and advance knowledge, wisdom, and understanding by teaching and research, and to promote the study of the principles for which Jawaharlal Nehru worked during his lifetime, which are national integration, social justice, secularism, democratic way of life, international understanding, and scientific approach to the problems of the society. JNU is in existence for over 45 years and is known for its teaching and research, standing nationally and internationally, and has now earned the status of University of Excellence. The university has over 8,000 students, spread over a number of schools, there are 10 schools and four special centers. And all these students come from all parts of the country and abroad, and from all sections of society. At present, more than 120 programs are offered at various levels. Recently, we have decided to introduce a certificate of proficiency course in Pali language in Special Center for Sanskrit Studies. There are around 540 faculty members contributing to the academic and research endeavors of this university. Since its inception, the university is known for interdisciplinary teaching. Jane is also known for its ethos, the ethos of continuous dialogue and discussions on any issues, inviting leaders, distinguished personalities and scholars from India and abroad to this university and respecting diverse views. 
our faculty, students and management has made sustained efforts to maintain university's unique character from its inception. His Holiness gracious visit to our university today has enthused our students, faculty and everyone on the campus. I am sure your address will help in enlightening the audience on a subject of vital importance. May I now invite Professor Sudapai, the rector of this university, for her reflections on his holiness. Our chief guest, his holiness, Honorable Chancellor, Dr. Kasturi Rangan, Vice Chancellor, Professor S.K. Sapori, Rector, Professor Prasenjit Sen, distinguished members of the faculty, staff, and students. I consider it a great privilege to say a few words about His Holiness by way of welcome and introduction. His Holiness, the 14th Dalai Lama, describes himself as a simple Buddhist monk. He was born on 6 July 1935 to a farming family in a small hamlet located in northeastern Tibet. At a very young age of two, the child was recognized as the reincarnation of the previous 13th Dalai Lama. The Dalai Lamas are believed to be the manifestations of Avalokiteshvara, Aval, Aval, the Bodhisattva of compassion and the patron saint of Tibet. They are believed to be enlightened human beings who have postponed their own nirvana and chosen to take rebirth in order to serve humanity. His Holiness began his monastic education at the age of six. The curriculum consisted of five major and five minor subjects. The major subjects were logic, Tibetan art and culture, Sanskrit, medicine and Buddhist philosophy, which was further divided into five categories of Prajna Parimita, the perfection of wisdom, Madhyamik, the philosophy of the middle way, Vinaya, the canon of monastic discipline, Abhidharma, metaphysics and Praman, that is logic and epistemology. The five minor subjects were poetry, music and drama, astrology, composition and phrasing and synonyms. At 23, His Holiness sat for his final exam in Lhasa's Jokhang Temple during the annual prayer festival in 1959. He passed with honors and was awarded the highest degree equivalent to a doctorate of Buddhist philosophy. His Holiness has received universal recognition as a man of peace and has received a number of awards. In 1989, he was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize for his nonviolent struggle for the liberation of Tibet. He has consistently advocated policies of non-violence even in the face of extreme aggression. He also became the first Nobel laureate to be recognized for his concern for global environmental problems. His Holiness has traveled to more than 67 countries spanning six continents. He has received over 150 awards, honorary degrees, prizes, etc. in recognition of his message of peace, non-violence, interreligious understanding, universal responsibility, and compassion. He has also authored or co-authored more than 110 books. His Holiness has held dialogues with heads of different religions and participated in many events promoting interreligious harmony and understanding. Since the mid-1980s, His Holiness has become, begun a dialogue with modern scientists, mainly in the field of psychology, neurobiology, quantum physics, and cosmology. This has led to a historic collaboration between Buddhist monks and world-renowned scientists in trying to help individuals attain peace of mind. This has also led to the introduction of modern science in the traditional curriculum of Tibetan monastic institutions. It is our great privilege and honor to have His Holiness amongst us and to listen to his lecture today. Thank you. I now invite Honorable uh, Chancellor to make his remarks. His Holiness, the Dalai Lama, let me join my esteemed colleagues, Professor Sudhir Kumar Sopori, Vice Chancellor of JNU, and Professor Sudhapai, Rector of JNU, in welcoming Your Holiness to Jawaharlal Nehru University for delivering the 11th Nehru Memorial Lecture on the eve of the 120th birth anniversary of our beloved First Prime Minister. Over a millennia, this part of the world had the benefit of wisdom from many great thinkers and philosophers who created a timeless value system for, that has always given primacy to compassion and strong commitment to the message of peace and nonviolence. 
as a true cross bearer of this legacy, this country is indeed fortunate to have your holiness amidst us. In the contemporary context, your holiness has been zealously working to transform this world as a planet of love, peace and compassion. In a world where several societies are witnessing the emerging increasing restlessness and violence, your holiness philosophy and thoughts provide a beacon of hope. Your holiness message of peace, non-violence, inter-religious understanding, universal responsibility and compassion are truly most relevant in the present day world. Your Holiness have adopted multiple pathways to give effect to this message. In particular, the initiation of dialogue of Your Holiness with contemporary scientists, particularly in the United States, mainly in the field of psychology, neurobiology, quantum physics and cosmology, an extraordinary instrument to achieve peace of mind is indeed unique and innovative. These efforts have led to the introduction of modern science in the traditional curriculum of Tibetan monastic institutions re-established outside Tibet. It's here that a genuine exchange between the cumulative knowledge and experience of Buddhism and modern science of wide-ranging issues pertaining to the human mind for cognition and emotion to understanding the capacity of transformation inherent in the human brain can be very interesting and potentially beneficial as well as opined by your holiness. This university with its wide-ranging academic interest is truly an institution that represents the confluence of knowledge from different disciplines, themes and subjects. Your own holiness awesome intellectual accomplishments and will be truly benefit those who are present here by enriching each one of us in unprecedented directions and dimensions through this rare opportunity. We express our deepest gratitude to your holiness for accepting to deliver the 11th memorial, Nehru Memorial Lecture on human approach to world peace. Who can be better equipped than your holiness to provide the necessary wisdom to identify solutions for the varied problems that confront the present world? Your Highness, may I invite you to deliver the lecture. Respected elder brothers and sisters and Grace Kothi, our human brothers and sisters. I want to use the emphasis the basic human level we are saying human being. Actually, seven billion human beings are same human being, mentally, emotionally, physically. Of course, physical level, little differences, uh, the shape of nose, of color, or color of hair, uh, and also to some people, more hair. Now I'm now less and less hair. <laughs> These are minor differences. Basically, they all our brain, I think seven billion human beings. I think in fact as a except uh, uh, some of as a uh, defects way. I see. Can you get a defect? So the otherwise you see all you have the same brain. So more important now, today's world. Demarcation due to faith, due to nationality, due to color, are not important. Modern global economy, national boundary, uh, not important. Beyond national, right, national boundaries or religious boundaries, 
and then ecology. So the reality itself, not telling us, the seven billion human beings work together as a humanity. I think we, not only in past human history, but even today, suppose to the first century, I think now we human beings should be more mature still. A lot of problem which actually our own creation. All these problems happen due to we emphasis on secondary level of differences. Color, nationality, different faith. So if we go deeper level, we are the same human being. Seven million human beings, everyone want a happy life, no one suffering. And we are social animals. Individual future depend on the rest of the community. Finally, the rest of the humanity. So I always prefer start brothers, sisters. Or chancellor or professors. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think seven million <laughs> So indeed, a uh, great honor. They say, you invited me, I give a lecture on Kasadi. No, no, my, the president, the memorial, the Kandi, the Kasadi, no, the news. So I feel great honor. First day, uh, he was, I think, great leader of, I think I can say, one of the great leaders with the vision of Asia. And then, of course, great leader of this uh, nation. Although this nation, very, very ancient nation, but we got independence, 1940. Seven, first Prime Minister, and of course under the leadership of Mahatma Gandhi. I was told sometimes between them, Pandit Nehru and Jawaharlal Nehru, some little, little differences, <laughs> but basically they they led, well, they led this great nation. Uh, and, and establish great this union right? uh, and uh, based on principle of democracy, uh, religious harmony, and mainly based on thousand year old Indian tradition of Ahimsa. I think sometimes I feel the non-alignment, non that also, you see, uh, some concept of Ahimsa. So, great leader. Then me personally, 1956, no, 1954, first meeting at the Nehru, the place in Peking, So I remember a little sort of strange sort of experience. One, day, one night, this is the state banquet, banquet uh, I think offered by Juhane. So Juhane hosting, hosting the uh, Nehru. So Juhane, uh, before he came, the all other Dignities of people from China. Online, mm. myself, Benjamin Lama, also you see the same line. They want the journal uh, to come from there and each introduced to Pandit Nero. And then in front of me, journal 
if you do it better luck. I didn't know that moment. She almost looks frozen, frozen there, frozen. Uh, no more, no speak. <laughs> <laughs> Then two of them very smart. So then uh, introduced next benchmark like that. <laughs> so at that time I felt, oh, when he got met me, I think at least several years, you see, this sort of serious concern about Tibet, <coughs> about new development. And I think, like South Africa, there is sort of a city, Kazuda, Chisna Kazuda, views or ideas like that, or warning. Perhaps, I think that few seconds, perhaps uh, 15, 20 seconds, I think uh, in his mind, something, I think, let's say, I mean, these kind of thought, I think. So, 1956, Buddha Jayanti celebration. Firstly, Mahabodhi Society of India extends invitation. Then Chinese authority, this he told me, oh, just small organization. So not worthy except that invitation. And then somehow, the India's mission in Hassa, they said, we have a very close sort of link. So we informed the reaction of the Chinese government. Then sent official invitation from government of India. Then the same Chinese officials, you see, uh, telling me, now government invite, you must accept. <laughs> <laughs> so I got the opportunity to come to India. Uh, so since 1956, I had several meetings with Pandit Nehru. The situation very difficult. So I seek uh, advice from him. Actually, 1956 and then uh, beginning 57, some of my people insist now I should remain in India, should not return to Tibet. And I seek advice from him. And he say, oh, this moment better return. And he personally, you see, showing keen interest. He carry one copy of 17 point agreement, which we signed in 1951. So then he marked some of the cross of it. One of my friends, cross such a stuff, I, I don't know, cross, isn't it? Oh, so he marked some cross, and then he advised me, oh, on this basis, you should try. <coughs> uh, then, beginning 57, I returned, and according to his advice, and exactly I try according his advice. As soon as I reach Yatun, as usual, the Chinese officials said, come to see me. Then I told, now we should pay more attention about as the mystic side. The positive thing that other people praise we have the responsibility to look especially about this city, mystic site. Uh, 
Uh, then I took, uh, then, oh, no, not too much. Uh, so then, 1959, uh, April, I reached the Indian border, Kansamani. Uh, at the beginning, we little bit sort of hesitate whether government India allowed immediate or not. So we try to either enter India or Bhutan. Then I received the message about India ready to accept or welcome me. Then I reached India, uh, and I think end of April, I reached Missouri. Within a few days, Pantan Nehru came to Missouri. And then since uh, 56, 57, uh, what really happened, I told him, as I reported, as a report, I told him. So he paid special sort of attention. Then one indication. 60. Our establishment of our school for Tibetan young children, young Tibetan. The Pantan Nehru told me the medium of instruction should be English. English is world language, right? international language. And then he also told me the best way for to keep alive Tibetan issue, give proper education for younger generation. So, he, uh, for us, me personally also, is a great supporter, great sort of friend. So, I feel very happy, very happy. It's an exception on special occasion. Thank you. Now, uh, I think firstly, uh, as I mentioned earlier, I have three commitments. Number one commitment on the level of I am a human being. I believe each human being have moral responsibility uh, to take concern about seven billion humanity because each individual is part of the humanity. And individually also, individual interest also. Now, when you take more serious concern about the well-being of other that brings immense inner strength and that creates friendship that brings deep satisfaction for individual person we are social animal we need friendship money will not bring friendship Power will not bring friendship, compassion, sense of concern of their well-being. That brings friendship. So for one's own individual interest, right? one's own sort of interest, take care more the community or the people. You get a maximum benefit. I think Sometimes I tell him, here was I want to tell this famous university and many young students over there. So look at my face. Okay. Now, age, now who was 79, now next year, 80th, birth, 80th birthday. When I met some of my friends, uh, just a few minutes ago, I met one my old, I said, a long time friend, the 1960, 61, license officer, 
Mr. Marutra. He told me uh, his age is you now 80. So I'm 79. So one year old than me. Uh, in face, although my, my own head also is you now becoming more more shining here. <laughs> that's that's it. <laughs> yes. Oh, much worse. <laughs> and then the face also, you see, looks, you see, uh, uh, much older there. <laughs> then my friend, when I met in, uh, when I visited Europe or America, Japan, in these different places, some my old friend, oh, they expressed to me, oh, since our meeting, the sun sun say, 10 years ago, some say 20 years ago, there's not much change in your face. And then sometimes they ask me, what's your secret thing? <laughs> then I, I jokingly tell them, oh, my secret must keep secret. <laughs> I think actually, peace of mind, really, that's what that brings healthy body. And all medical scientists, they also now realize this healthy mind is a very important factor for healthy body. Now I can tell you, according to my own experience, it's a peace of mind. Peace of mind, not with or it, tranquilizer or alcohol <laughs> or some kasota, grass, grass. Or spend hours and uh, hours just gambling, gambling, gambling. So what's that, sir? Gambling. Hmm? Not like that. Meditate, thinking, analyze. That really immense benefit to individuals. So sometimes people have a wrong sort of conception. Practice of love is something good for other. Not necessarily good for oneself. It's totally wrong. So, so my number one commitment is, uh, see, Kasoda, uh, try to uh, try to uh, try to make awareness the inner value as a human being is very important. Today's world. Too much materialistic life. And the very existing education system also very much oriented about uh, material value. Uh, so now, I think India should lead education, more complete form of education. Educate about material value and education about internal value. Irrespective whether believer or non-believer, again India, thousand year old have tradition, secular concept. So my Indian friend, as he told me, according to Indian understanding about the secularism, secular is not only respect all religions, but also respect non-believer. That's very wise. That concept, according to Indian understanding, secular. It's very relevant to today's world because today, out of seven billion human beings, over one billion non believer we cannot exclude these people. They must have been part of the humanity. And they also should realize the ultimate source of happiness is within ourselves, not man, not money, not power. So if moral principle based on religious faith, then these people will not show any interest because they have no interest in religion. So the India's thousand year old tradition, secular, respect, even non believer, I think that is really a wonderful sort of tradition. So I follow India's tradition, secular. Approach. And proper secular sort of concept, respect all religion. So religious harmony also comes. 
So my number one commitment is promotion of secular ethics to entire seven religion being. Then secular, secular sort of ethics is the basis of all major world religious tradition. So once individual develop firm conviction about inner value to secular way of education, then religious tradition, religious faith also become genuine, compassionate sort of person like that. Otherwise, friendly speaking, among the religious people also quite number of mischievous people. <laughs> <laughs> so their faith, faith, uh, in a way, frankly speaking, fail to bring in a moral principle. So therefore, in order to, in order to make major religious tradition become something really meaningful, spiritual, spiritual tradition, I think basics of conviction about moral ethics, not preaching, but through education. Then I think within this century, I think humanity can be more peaceful humanity. So this century can be peaceful century, century of peace, century of non-violence, ultimately century of compassion possible through education, not through preaching. So that's my number one commitment. So you also part of humanity. This is not only my responsibility. You all have the responsibility, particularly the younger people. I usually make distinction. Generation of 21st century, generation of 20th century. Now respected. Uh, and the brothers, we all brothers and sisters, we all brought to the century. Our century gone. <laughs> now these younger people, I think age below 30, 20, uh, 15, you are real generation of 21st century. If you make tireless effort, I think a positive result may enjoy later your, your, your life. We cannot. Even my life remain another 15, 20 years. I may, may not see a better world. But we must make effort. Effort must start now. So, elder, brother, elder brothers, including myself and sister, our responsibility is telling this uh, generation of the 21st century. Uh, and I also see we can, we, we can tell these young people, oh, my generation really created a lot of problems. <laughs> so now you must solve this problem. <laughs> so, and then my second commitment is promotion of uh, religious harmony. And that also it is tradition. Really, I always is telling wherever I give talk, India is the living example. All major world religious traditions live together. Now today is India. Beside homegrown religion, uh, that is Sanjism, at the difference sort of Hinduism, Jainism, Buddhism. And from outside, Zoroastrianism, Judaism, Christian, Christianity, and Muslim. So all major world religious traditions now live, live here. Of course, occasionally is a problem. That's understandable. But basically, I think very good harmonies of spirit. This is really uh, India's sort of wonderful tradition. You must pay more attention. 
This is harmony. Very, very important. Then third my commitment, I'm Tibetan, as a Tibetan. Then third level, I'm Tibetan. So, and most important, Tibetan people. They really trusted me. So, as far as, as the temporal responsibility is concerned, and now since 2001, <coughs> we already achieved elected political leadership. Then my position is semi-retired position. Then 2011, now I completely retired. No political responsibility. So now, my main sort of concern or main effort is preservation of Tibetan culture, culture of peace, culture of compassion. It's really worthwhile preserve. And particularly, most of populated nations in China really need culture of peace, culture of justice, culture of non-violence. Very important. So, my main effort regarding Tibet problem is preservation of our culture, including our language. And then also is also the maximum care about the environment. Tibet usually people call people call Tibet roof of the world. And the major river come from Tibet. Major rivers which actually cover whole Asia from China up to Pakistan. So come from Tibet. So maximum sort of so the, because of the care, uh, 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 ecology is something very very important. So so these things my main sort of so the commitment. So please you or whatever way, please uh, think with these points. First and number one, most most important is Think about humanity. Sometimes we need uh, not just thinking about outside world, only India. And even within India, only your own state. And then, first, then finally your own sort of district, or your own town, and your own family. <laughs> now you must think humanity. I think those great. Indian sort of thinkers, like I, I think particularly, I think in this, this, this case, I think I can say that the Buddha, see, Indian. Nowadays in modern modern time, Nepalese, they say in the Buddha Shakyamuni was a Nepalese, not Indian. <laughs> but that's, that's not. <laughs> in ancient time, you see, one small kingdom. Uh, so basically. I think everybody knows Buddha Shakyamuni was Indian. So, you see, these great thinkers, I say, they always look whole world, entire humanity. So now modern India also you see, should think whole world. Because you have great potential to make new shape of the world. Firstly, Population-wise, over a billion population, the greatest populated nation is China, people's world of China. Second, India. Then you have the uh, freedom, democracy, rule of law, although some drawbacks here and there. But basically, you see, wonderful. So, you must work hard, uh, and mainly education. So now this university, famous university, I have no, no doubt in the past you make tremendous sort of contribution regarding education and in future also you will uh, further I said, make greater greater contribution. So I very much appreciate and then teachers and students you see, should keep in your mind the greater responsibility and also the but say you must realize great potential. This country is it make a contribution, better world. So that I want to tell you, and then you also mentioned the Sanskrit class, but that's very very important. 
as far as Buddhism is concerned, the Pali tradition and Sanskrit tradition. The Pali tradition, Burma, Thailand, Cambodia, Laos, Sri Lanka, these countries, very well preserved. Now, Sanskrit tradition, I think, logically, the India have the responsibility to preserve even. Uh, even the language step, Sanskrit language, some uh, Sanskrit scholar, they told me the style of Nagarjuna's writing and also Dharmakirti's writing, the very high standard of Sanskrit was so, that language of literature. So, this I think, uh, uh, India, I think only the nation is the who had, now, now who, who had the moral responsibility to preserve this Sanskrit tradition. Like that. So that, so when you mentioned about the Kasai new class for the Sanskrit, wonderful. And also Pali. Pali, I think more or less, I think quite Kasai quite well preserved in these, by these Buddhist countries. So, so that's all. <laughs> <laughs> The temples, you see, the concerned people, you see, give you shawl, right? Shawl. So, this tradition comes from India. Uh, and then, this, in the past, you see, this material made in China <laughs> under Tibetan instruction. So, see, some Tibetan script here. So, this also, you see, shows a symbol of harmony. Indian tradition, used by Tibetan, material made in China. Professor Renuka Singh to hand over the book titled Boundless as the Sky. This is a compilation of secular lectures by His Holiness, published by Michael Lafon. His Holiness will release this book.